John William Waterhouse was an English painter known for working in the academic style before adopting the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood's aesthetic and subject matter. His paintings were well known for their representations of women from both Arthurian legend and Greek or Roman mythology. All in all, Waterhouse made 118 paintings. One of Waterhouse's best-known subjects is The Lady of Charlotte, from a lyrical ballad by the 19th-century English poet Alfred Tennyson. The ballad itself was based on a medieval Arthurian legend about the Lady of Shalott, who died of unanswered love for Sir Launcelot. She lived under a curse that forbade her to go outside or even look directly out of a window, so she was trapped in a tower on an island near Camelot. She had to use mirror to see the world and wove a tapestry of scenes she could see in it. One day the lady saw Sir Launcelot inside her mirror. The sight of the handsome knight and the sound of him singing drew her away from her tapestry to the window, and she looked outside. The mirror cracked from side to side, and she was destined from this moment to die from the curse. She managed, however, to leave the tower to take a boat across the river, but met her death before she could reach Camelot. Waterhouse depicted this moment in his painting. The lady is sitting on the tapestry she has worn. We also see a lantern at the front of her boat and three candles. They are a representation of her life. Two of the candles are already blown out, signifying that her death is soon to come. Actually, Waterhouse painted three different versions of this character, in 1888, this painting, and also in 1894 and 1916. Two of his other paintings on the theme show different moments from the ballad. This is the second of three paintings. Here the lady is depicted at the moment she saw Sir Launcelot. And on the third painting we see Lady of Charlotte getting rest from the tapestry she is weaving. Another of Waterhouse's favorite subjects was Ophelia. The most famous work is from 1894, on which Ophelia is shown just before her death, putting flowers in her hair. Like the Lady of Charlotte and other Waterhouse paintings, it depicts a woman dying in or near water. It is said that the artist might have been inspired by painting of Ophelia by John Everett Millay. Let's look at this work and then move on. The Ophelia Waterhouse painted in 1888 was his diploma work. Actually, he wanted to show another painting, a mermaid, but didn't complete it in time. This 1888 Ophelia was lost until the 20th century. Waterhouse would paint Ophelia again in 1894 and then in 1909. The artist was born in Rome, but his parents were English painters, William and Isabella Waterhouse. It's interesting that we don't know the exact date of his birth, only the day he was baptized on. It was on the 6th of April 1849. At this time, members of Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood who will inspire John later, already made their first impressions on the London art world. Such artists as John Everett Millay, Gabriel Rossetti and William Holman Hunt. We will most certainly make videos with paintings by these artists as well, so subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell not to miss new uploads. Though Waterhouse lived in Italy only five years of his life, he later made a lot of paintings based on Roman and Greek mythology. It is believed that his early life in Rome inspired his future work. So, when John was five years old, his parents moved to England, to be more precise, to London. And their house was not far away from the new museum, opened in 1852, when Queen Victoria was 33 years old. I'm talking about Victoria and Albert Museum, of course. As Waterhouse came from an artistic family, he often found himself sketching various masterpieces from this museum as well as from the British Museum and the National Gallery. 
Aged 22, he entered the Royal Academy of Art School, first eager to study sculpture, but then moving on to painting. First works by Waterhouse were not pre-Raphaelite in nature, they were more classical in the academic style. Some compare his early paintings to that of Frederick Layton. In 1874, aged only 25, Waterhouse managed to exhibit one of his paintings at the Royal Academy Summer Exhibition. The painting was called Sleep and his half-brother Death. It was a very personal work for Waterhouse, for he made it just after both his younger brothers died of tuberculosis. The painting itself is a reference to the Greek gods Hypnos and Thanatos, who in the Greek mythology were brothers. This painting was a great success, and from that time Waterhouse would exhibit at the Royal Academy almost annually for 42 years. His paintings got much attention. In 1876 his work after the dance was given the prime position. By the way, it is believed that because of this success, he decided to make his paintings bigger in size. A very good example of painting based on Greek and Roman myths is the work called Hylas and the Nymphs. It was painted in 1896 and depicts a moment in which the youth Hylas was abducted by Nayads while seeking drinking water. Waterhouse made two works based on the same theme. The first one in 1893. Let's look at it as well. In 1915 Waterhouse planned another painting in the series of Ophelia, but his health was getting worse and worse. He died of cancer in 1917, not managing to realize his last ideas. Subscribe to our channel The Mind of Art if you would like to see more videos like this one. And we will meet very soon. Bye.